So previously we talked about vectors, right? And we defined vectors and we discussed those in detail. Well, it turns out that if you have vectors, then it automatically requires you to develop the idea of dual vectors. And by the way, dual vectors are also known as one forms. And this again, it comes from uh, the topic of differential forms on which I have made somewhat uh, in depth of a video on. Uh, and that's in the playlist of, I think it's called fun physics topics, right? And there I discuss uh, all the P forms, uh, one form, two form, and we see how can we develop and use them. So, well, uh, believe it or not, you have already worked with uh, dual vectors as they are very critical in defining what you call the dot product. So when you're taking a dot product of two vectors, you pick one vector from the vector space and the, uh, the other vector on which you are taking the dot product, it has to be from a dual uh, vector space. Now, of course, the chances are that you didn't know about this because in uh, when you're working in Rn, uh they just uh, look like vectors right the one forms or the dual vectors they appear just as vectors in rn right so well <clears throat> to define dual vectors how do we do that well we do so by uh well three conditions right now starting with uh that the dual vectors are straight directed objects and they're defined at a point in space and so hence they must exist in a copy of rn right uh, or it could be uh, mn right which is your manifold so uh, and this should be at each point and this is what we will call the cotangent space right so in vectors if you remember uh, it was a tangent space for uh, dual vectors or one forms it's the cotangent space they exist in a copy of these right in a cotangent space at each point right and, and number two is that the dual vectors are invariant but given a coordinate system, they can be expressed in terms of components and dual bases, which definitely do transform. Right. And the third um, um, condition for defining dual vectors is that the dual vectors linearly eat vectors and they throw out scalars right so what do i mean by that is say you have a dual vector let's say w and you compose it with uh, some scalar a times the vector v plus some scalar b times a vector uh, this w or let's call it something else let's call it v prime so you don't get confused with this w right okay now what would this be equal to well it's just uh the scalar can be taken outside right it's just a number and you have the dual vector w on v plus b w v prime right now this thing gives you a scalar or it is a number right so it's called a scalar. So that's what I meant by that these dual vectors, they linearly eat these vectors, right? And they spit out a scalar. Now, well, wait over here and think about this. Well, if vectors and dual vectors are invariant, like I just mentioned, 
Well, then what the hell are this uh, scalars, right? What is a scalar then? So it turns out that a scalar is an invariant as well, but whose explicit coordinate representation is also invariant, which is not in the case of vectors and dual vectors, right? So, well, uh, we will use a coordinate adapted uh, basis set of dual vectors. So, uh, say this is your x1, this is your x2, right? Just like in vectors, but for dual vectors, this direction is uh, some theta hat 2, and this one is theta hat 1, right? So these are the basis vectors for dual vectors. Now, for ordinary vectors, we had the intuitive example of, if you remember from the video on vectors, uh, we said that we could write this ds is equal to dx mu uh, times e hat mu. And we started with this thing, right? So for vectors, we started with this example. Well, for dual vectors, we don't have such a starting point. So what do we do then? Well, we are very clever. We will consider the condition number three that I talked about over here, which was that um, uh, this uh, dual vectors, they linearly eat vectors and spit out scalars so well uh, we'll consider this condition for dual vectors and we will define this thing that i'm saying eating right so eating will define this eating in terms of basis vectors and dual basis vectors so we'll do that as uh, theta hat mu times e hat nu, right, is a delta function that is, uh, it's a delta, what is happening? Yeah, it's a delta function uh, mu nu, which we all know already that if uh, mu is equal to nu, then we get plus one and it vanishes forever when mu is not equal to nu. So since this thing then is just a number, right? It's a scalar, then it must be invariant. That's how we said uh, a scalar is, right? And in fact, the components is also, are also invariant. So it's just a number, it must be invariant. So from this then, hence we can say that uh, theta hat mu e hat nu, is equal to this delta function mu nu which transforms as theta hat prime or uh, theta hat mu prime uh, times e hat nu prime which is equal to the delta function again mu prime nu prime because this again this delta function is an invariant because it's a number it's a scalar but now we already know from uh, the video on vectors that uh, this object lambda nu uh, nu prime times e hat nu. We know this transformation for uh, for the vector basis, right? Not for the dual, but this was for the basis vectors for the vectors, right? Ordinary vectors. So with this then, uh, we can make a guess, right? By looking at uh, this thing, let's make a guess that, well, even the dual basis vector transforms something like uh, theta hat um, mu prime lambda nu nu prime e hat nu, right? So this is a guess. Well, it's an educated guess, right? It's not just a normal guess. But well, based on this, uh, we can uh, also say 
that uh, um, mm, this thing lambda mu prime mu prime uh, sorry lambda mu prime mu theta hat uh, mu times uh, lambda nu nu prime e hat nu right this is uh, we are making the substitution for this transformation with these things right so this thing is then equal to lambda mu prime mu uh, then let's just move these lambdas here and there which we can do so we have this thing right and we have theta hat mu e hat uh, nu but we already know from this thing that this thing is just a delta function right and so uh, this thing is just delta mu nu right and then all of this just equals to lambda mu prime mu lambda nu uh, sorry lambda mu uh, nu prime which is again a delta function mu prime nu prime now over here these things well this one specifically can be written as lambda inverse and this one is lambda so now we know from all of this uh, well funny calculation that uh, e hat uh, mu transforms as e uh, mu prime e hat mu prime which is nothing but equal to lambda mu prime mu e hat mu right so this is for the vectors and we also now know that uh, theta hat mu so it's a dual basis vectors for dual vectors so we'll have this mu in the upper indices right so let me just write this down again yeah mu uh, and we know that now this transforms as theta hat uh, mu prime which is simply equal to lambda mu prime mu theta hat uh, mu right and these uh, these two they are the transformation laws so they're the transformation laws for uh, basis vectors and dual basis vectors right so these are the transformation laws for basis vectors and dual basis vectors right so we can uh, from here now we can see all the gory details of dual vectors eating up the vectors so uh, let me just write it over here gory details uh, of uh, dual vectors eating vectors you could see this from this uh, where this w is your dual vector and it eats your vector as uh, w mu v nu right times uh, theta hat uh, mu and for your ve uh, vector you would have e hat nu now we already know what this thing should be equal to because this thing is just a delta function this would be equal to w which is the dual vector mu v which is your vector nu times this delta function that you get from here that is delta mu nu so now we can say this uh, w eating v is just equal to w mu uh, v mu right this thing and this thing it belongs to the reals right and so therefore we can write this down as uh, a dual vector eating your vector as w0 v0 plus w1 v1 plus w2 v2 plus w3 v3 and we know that this belongs to the reals right okay so now by looking at this i know what you're thinking that yay we got dot product right but this actually is a combination of a dual vector and a vector right 
So now you might be tempted to ask, well, then what the hell is a dot product? So recall that the dot product combines two vectors to make a number, right? So in our language, what the dot product does is it takes a vector and turns it into a dual vector and then let a vector eat the dual vector and spit out a number. So if you want me to write this down, well, I cannot ask you. I, I, I'll just write these uh, steps down, right? So uh, first of all, a dot product, right? For a dot product. So I don't know, but you might be learning dot product properly in this uh, part of the video. What it does is that it takes a vector. So you have a vector, it takes a vector and then it turns it into a dual vector. So that's the first step. You have a vector, you turn it into a dual vector and then you let a vector, then a vector eats this dual vector, right? And now it will, by when it eats, a dual vector it has to well throw something out right uh, so what it does is then after all of this it will spit out uh, a number so it spits out uh, a number which is your scalar and that's what a dot product is right so once more even though I know I don't have to do this but a dot product takes a vector and turns it into a dual vector and then let a vector eat the dual vector and spit out a scalar or a number. So we can write this down in the mathematical notation, right? As V mu comma V mu is equal to V mu V mu, which is a number, right? And it belongs to the reals. Right. But now, then the question arises that how do we take a vector v mu and create a corresponding dual vector v mu from this thing, right? How is this done? That's the question. Well, uh, you can take a hint from Rn, right? And uh, that is in Rn, you have vi comma vj, which is equal to v1 v1 plus v2 v2 plus v3 v3 and so on, right? Uh, but this thing is equal to delta ij times vi uh, vj, right? And here, this delta ij is a metric on uh, the reals, so on Rn. So that's the metric on the real field, right? Now, uh, well, uh, let me just mention this. This thing in Dirac notation is just uh, this uh, uh, V i V j, right? So it's like this. So this is your bra and this is your get. That's how you write the dot product in bracket notation. That's just for uh, physicists, right? Okay, so, uh, well, with all of this now, uh, with this uh, metric, right, uh, for SR, that is special relativity, what we do is we replace uh, the, this delta ij, which is the metric, with uh, the metric eta mu nu. And we talked about this, right, in the previous videos on metrics. So now hence uh, this uh, dot product, which is V mu V nu is, in, is equal to uh, eta mu nu V mu V nu. So this is how you contract the vectors and dual vectors, right? Uh, what is that? Yeah, this thing, right. 
so in general you can then write down this all of this in general as v mu transforms to v mu right so the index shifting is happening with eta mu nu v nu now i hope you understand why does your metric shifts the indices or the metric is responsible for taking you from a space of vectors to a space of dual vectors right and so v mu then transforms to v mu with eta mu nu acting on v nu right now uh this this eta mu nu right is equal to its inverse so we could say that inverse is of eta is equal to eta itself but this note that this is only for sr that is special relativity in general uh, this eta inverse is not equal to eta right so this is in general so this is one of the very important points here. So the metric or its inverse moves indices up or down. That is, it raises or lowers the indices turning, a, turning uh, into dual vectors. So it turns a vector into dual vectors or it could turn a vector into uh, sorry or a dual vector into a vector so it goes works both ways right okay so and now uh, please uh, note that in all of this that we have been doing so far uh, we are not changing coordinates right now we'll talk about that in later videos right so well we are done with all of this right now. We are done with dual vectors, the concept of one forms uh, so far, right? Uh, we have not changed the coordinates and that's, I just said that we'll do that in a future video. But well, in the future again, then we will largely drop all the explicit reference to basis vectors, right? Uh, and, and again, the basis vectors are these ones, right? So E mu and the dual basis vectors, which are uh, theta hat mu and that is because since they take care of each other we can instead just focus on the components of these vectors right vectors and dual vectors so with this now i have told you almost everything you need to know about vectors and one forms again almost because we still have some uh, more things to talk about but uh in the next lecture, I will extend all of this to tensors where I will talk in somewhat depth about tensors and why they are so beautiful, right? In fact, vectors are themselves a tensor, right? And we'll see that in the video on tensors. And I would really recommend you to watch that video because uh, I will properly define tensors in that so well there uh, is one of the very popular definition for what is a tensor and people will tell you that a, a, a tensor is something that transforms like a tensor which I find it really funny because uh, it doesn't really tell you anything right so you're using you're using the word tensor itself to define a tensor and in my book that's now how, how things should work, right? So I would give you a proper and a very neat definition of a tensor. And, and I found that beautiful and I hope you would as well. And we will proceed uh, from that, right? So that's it for this video.